I'm originally from Ukraine and a few months ago I made a video explaining my 10 reasons why I chose Jamaica as one of the best countries in the world to live. I relocated in 2014, but how exactly my life changed in Jamaica? Is there any significant change in a lifestyle for somebody like me coming from overseas? Well, let me share it with you. My name is Irina and like most people, I've been struggling with all sorts of problems in my life. But with this Jamaica vlog, I'd like to count down top five of these problems that got solved only when I relocated to Jamaica. And in fact, Jamaica changed my life completely. For the better, otherwise I wouldn't be living here and making these videos. To the point. I'll start with something very simple that can be even viewed as trivial by some people, but to me it was very important because I'd been struggling with it since childhood. Jamaica solved my hair problem. Let me explain. You might have noticed that in most of my videos I have my hair up like this and it's the same in real life actually. I've had my hair like this for what the last five years except two occasions when I braided my hair specifically for the videos on this channel and you will see a part of the footage in different episodes but what people don't realize is that I have really strange hair type people in eastern Europe would usually have straight or maybe wavy hair and of course all hair products that are sold in Ukraine are aimed at these people only I don't have this common European type of hair and for years I didn't know what to do with it. And for people who are wondering what are you talking about, let me show you. I have this. You see Jamaica was the first country where I could find products that can match my hair type and I use wax and all sorts of butters, you know, to smooth out this part so it doesn't go all over the place. Now before Jamaica, you know, even if I put it like this, it will still stick out all over the place. My mother didn't know what to do with my hair when I was a child, so she cut it really, really short so everyone thought I was a boy. You know, I, I saw those other girls in Ukraine who had this you know, beautiful, long, silky kind of hair and I wanted just like that. And I started growing my hair long, but of course it was this. So when I was a teenager, um, <laughs> other kids would tease me, they would call me a sponge head. Or the other one, they would say, oh, here comes the explosion at a pasta factory. Uh, which was really funny for them, not so much funny for me. And I hated my hair, I, I really did. Well, that was until I was about 16, I realized that I was getting a lot of attention from men because of the hair like this. Uh, so I began hiding it and I'm still doing it until now. So this little problem that had been annoying me from childhood was finally solved when I discovered the Jamaican hair shop with such incredible range of products. I just couldn't believe it. In Ukraine, we don't have anything even close to this. And I found all this hair butter, different oils and things for styling. And it turned out they match my hair type perfectly. So my hair finally stopped breaking, became shiny, still curly, but not too fizzy. So I can now get it out of the way when it's too hot and style it if I need to. Anyway, now you know a little bit of my personal life story, but I do have to mention the following. It wasn't until I actually created this YouTube channel when I found out that, you know, from the comment section, that there is this huge issue in the United States with Caucasian people wearing braids or dreadlocks. They're frowned upon because this is viewed as cultural appropriation, while in the Caribbean there is actually no such issue. There are reasons why this is the case and I'll make a separate video about it. After this seemingly easy subject that isn't that easy after all, we're moving to more things. When I lived in Ukraine, somewhere in October, I would start getting coughing, runny nose, sneezing, and it would continue on and off until the end of April. This is not only because of cold weather, but also because of measures taken to fight the cold with central heating, which makes the air super dry. It's very bad for your breathing system, and many Ukrainians suffer from these on and off colds from October to April. It is also very bad for your skin. A lot of lucky people have either oily skin or combined skin types, as in 
natural defense mechanism, I guess, against cold. And I have super dry skin. And in Ukraine, I had to moisturize my hands like 20 times a day, because if I don't, my skin is gonna turn into this. And if I leave it for longer, it will begin peeling off like a zombie. It's not a medical condition or anything. It's just with dry skin, it's more difficult to live in colder climates. The reason I'm telling you this is not because having to moisturize my hands and having difficulties to breathe for half of the year is a big deal, but it is especially combined with this gloomy weather outside. And look, people think that winter is this beautiful white snow, and it is when it's outside of the city. Ukraine is an incredibly diverse and beautiful country. The Carpathian Mountains and winter are like a place from Christmas fairy tales. But I'm from the city. And what happens to snow in the city? Two hours and it's filthy. Everything is basically gray. And I kept feeling this sleepy and exhausted all the time. In general, I'm a very energetic person, but from October to April, my productivity would be like really low compared to what it was in summer. Sometimes in winter, I would sleep for like 12 hours and, and I would still feel tired. There were several points that kept me going though. I was very passionate about my work. I was teaching at online school I created, so I was spending most of my time at my computer desk with a view of the wall. My family was very supportive and I knew why I was doing it, so that one day I could live in a place with summer all year round. And surely enough, when I relocated to Jamaica, I stopped having those regular colds that kept annoying me and basically I stopped being a zombie for half of the year. And this brings me to another interesting point of how living in Jamaica can actually solve other major problems that a lot of people have to go through. Now I'm going to tell you something shocking. Do you know top five countries with the lowest suicide rates in the world? Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, Bahamas, Grenada, and Jamaica, all in the Caribbean. While my home country, Ukraine, is in the list of top 20 countries with the highest suicide rate. It occupies number 14 out of 183 countries listed. Life can be difficult in Jamaica, but in other countries, people think that life isn't difficult. It's unbearable for them. Maybe life is good there but they don't feel it that way. It's a very serious issue that gets overlooked by so many. In fact, depression wasn't even viewed as an illness until recently. People thought it was just an excuse not to go to work or something. But the thing is, when you're born in a certain society, you get used to the way things are and the way you feel about them. If you go to public transport in Ukraine, you will notice that people don't smile. They just go with a oh, like. It is crazy because Ukrainians in general are very hospitable, kind people. It's just socially, people don't smile at each other in public places, like among strangers. And if I walk into a boss smiling like, hello, hi, people will think I'm drunk or an idiot. And they will get suspicious, like, what are you so happy about? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs>
the moment I came to Jamaica, I've never been miserable, ever. It also so happened that this attitude and passion for life in Jamaica allowed me to live through some of the saddest moments in my life without falling into depression. Covid situation hit Jamaica so hard. I mean, country dependent on tourism. What do Jamaicans do? Give up? No. They have this attitude, hold on tight, we'll get through this. And a smile on their face. Now, it's generally believed that countries with tropical climates have lower productivity levels than countries with colder climates. But for me personally, it was the other way around. In Jamaica, I can sleep from six to eight hours a day, wake up full of energy and work from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day without being exhausted. And this productivity allowed me to get this extra time to invest in things I really enjoyed doing doing and that mattered to me. Because of living in Jamaica, I can work at full capacity 12 months a year instead of four months a year. And you see this range of colors when you go outside in any place in Jamaica. They are so rich and vibrant. And I'm not just talking about nature and weather. I'm talking about everything. Like houses have different colors. People wearing different clothes that is not gray, colorful. All of this is so pleasing to eye and helps to kill depression at the very root, even if it's like trying to crawl on. Mm -mm. And this might be the reason why Caribbean countries have such low suicide rates. While in other countries like Ukraine, people turn to other methods that they hope will help them to solve their problems, which in fact, make situation only worse. And this brings me to other major thing that Jamaica changed in my life, and that's quitting bad habits. A few years ago, I made a video about Jamaica in Russian for Russian-speaking audience. There were a lot of positive comments, but there were also people writing things like, oh, look at her. Imagine how much she's been smoking before making this video. Some people just don't get it. They think that the only way you can be happy, smiling, laughing, cracking jokes is only if you are under the influence of something. And since I'm in Jamaica, it must be cannabis, right? But if I was in Ukraine, they would have probably assumed it was alcohol or drugs. Must be something. Because naturally, human being cannot behave in such a way. Okay, guys, it depends on a personality, of course. But it is natural for a human being not to be miserable. One of the ways I was trying to keep myself happy in Ukraine was, with the help of tobacco, having beer from time to time, and doing sports. And yes, I know these things don't actually go together, but... I began smoking cigarettes regularly from the age of 28, and by Ukrainian standards, it's really late. Most people begin smoking when they're teenagers. My husband began smoking when he was 15, my father from 14, my mother from 17. As you can guess, smoking cigarettes is one of the biggest problems in Ukraine. But I had that arrogance to think that because I was an adult, I wouldn't get addicted to nicotine. I'd be able to stop any time I wanted. Not like those teenagers. They don't know when to stop. <laughs> and of course, before I knew it, I was already smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. Sometimes I would go jogging, come back, and the first thing I would have a cigarette and I would hate myself for it. This was really bad. And of course, I wanted to quit. Almost 25% of all adults in Ukraine smoke at least one pack of cigarettes a, a day, you know, on a daily basis. And that number is much higher when we talk about irregular smokers. When you live in such a society, 
and you are trying to quit smoking, it's really difficult. And also cigarettes in Ukraine are very cheap. They're like less than $2 a pack. There are Ukrainian people who managed to get out of this addiction, but I couldn't. I tried several times and I failed. When I came to Jamaica for the very first time, I was completely shocked by the fact that I couldn't find cigarettes anywhere. I was like, where is this cigarette kiosk? And people would be like, what? In Ukraine, we have these cigarette kiosks, a bus stop at like different houses, like you would have them everywhere. And when I was in Orchereos, I was told I had to go to a supermarket, a gas station, or like I had to check out some local bar somewhere. When I finally found that bar and said, could I please have cigarettes? And they gave me one, <laughs> one cigarette. I was like, what is this? I need a pack. And it turned out they only had like five cigarettes left in that pack they had and that's it. And I just couldn't believe it. Like they sell cigarettes by one piece. And then I looked around and I realized people don't really smoke cigarettes in Jamaica. There are no ashtrays in restaurants. We, people don't even have ashtrays at home. It's like really strange. In Ukraine, by the way, public smoking is prohibited, but people would still walk from their home to a bus stop and they would be smoking. You know, that. After all those years battling that addiction, it's only when we moved to Jamaica we managed to quit smoking completely. Both my husband and I. But now you might be wondering, hmm? no, I don't smoke cannabis. I'll make a separate video about the subject because there is this image people have about Jamaica and cannabis and it has to be addressed at some point. Anyway, relocating to Jamaica helped me and my husband quit smoking and I still can't believe that because there had been so many failed attempts before Jamaica. So what is top one change that Jamaica made in my life? It's related to work and uh, let me do this first, okay? But bear with me. I've heard so many times from the locals that there is a huge corruption problem in Jamaica. And each time I heard this, I was simply holding myself back, trying not to say anything in return, because otherwise I might have sounded either insensitive or disrespectful, and obviously I didn't mean any of that. But let me show you something. Corruption is measured in a country with the help of so-called corruption perception index. And the first thing you learn is that there is not a single country in the world that has no corruption. All of them have it at different levels, okay? Then the countries are ranged by ranks. Rank number one is the least corrupt country, which would be Denmark and New Zealand, and their index is 87. Canada and UK are ranked 12 and the US is 23. These countries are at the top of the list and they are viewed as less corrupt. Rank 179 is Somalia with index only 9 and perceived as more corrupt. So what rank is Jamaica? Jamaica is actually in the middle, rank 70, closer to the top and at the edge of becoming a country that is perceived as less corrupt. What do you know? But what about Ukraine? which is Europe, must be at the top, right? It's wrong. It ranks 126, close to the very end of the list, along with some other most corrupt places in the world. So when you're talking about corruption, please don't say anything to a Ukrainian. Please don't, is like... <sighs> Corruption in Ukraine is like crime in Jamaica. It's our weakest point. But okay, all of these are mere numbers. Let me show you a few examples, what it actually means in real life. There is a place in Jamaica called cockpit country that has protected ecosystem, but it also happens to have valuable minerals. And certain companies want to do mining in that protected land. If Jamaican government allows these companies to do mining, it will bring some money into the economy of the country. But since such interference into the ecosystem can destroy the whole island, allowing such mining would not allow the country to prosper and it's an obvious fact. 
So, all newspapers keep talking about it. People are signing petitions not to mine in cockpit country and people are closely monitoring and complaining if miners are getting close to that protected area. Now, compare this to a situation we had in Ukraine. The western part of Ukraine has absolutely beautiful forests that are extremely valuable for Ukrainian ecosystem. And one day, People wake up to the news that there is no forest anymore. Where is it? Gone. We don't know who did it, when they did it. And journalists begin investigation and they can prove absolutely nothing. Nobody knows anything. That's it. This is just to show you guys that when a government is really corrupt, you wouldn't know these things are happening until it's too late to do anything about it. But how's it relevant to me? Well, corruption in Jamaica usually occurs when somebody is trying to do something illegal at any level and they have to bribe people to be able to do this illegal thing. Ukraine has this very same problem as well, but what's worse, you have to bribe people even if you want to do something legal, something good. Like when you have an office for your company, you need to get a fire safety certificate. So you do everything that is required. And when the inspector comes, he goes like, no, your door is not good. It says fireproof, it opens outside, on, you know, all good. Yeah, but you know, it's Christmas and my son needs a new computer and you need a new fire certificate. I'm not paying you anything. Uh, declined. In Jamaica, I wanted to get licensed to launch a tourist attraction. There were so many departments you had to go through, like different institutions that I was like, oh no, they're not gonna give me any certificates. And like, do people pay to everyone? And I, is it, what is it? The corrupt, oh. I just went to the first department. I provided all the documents they required. And the person goes, mm, yep, there you go. Here's your certificate. Really? Just like that? I mean, I provided the documents and you give me the certificate. I mean, that was lucky, but it was the same everywhere. It turned out if your documents correspond to the requirements, nobody expects a bribe. And yes, I understand this is how it's supposed to be, but I didn't expect it in Jamaica because I kept hearing so many times from people that there is corruption, and I'm sure there is, but the fact that I can build a proper legal business, get loans, reinvest and grow different projects, and nobody's on my nerves trying to close my company down for no reason just to get a little bit from me. For someone from Ukraine, it's incredible. Like, uh, whew, I can do business. This finally gave me the freedom to do the work I like and maybe create something significant by launching more and more projects. So this has been a bit of a personal vlog story of how Jamaica changed my life. My question to you, what is one thing that you love about Jamaica and how it influenced your life? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.